Oh, this video is dedicated toward the TTCF squad. Welcome in. Yes, we're doing a dedicated video about TTCF. If anybody clicked on this video that is not in the TTCF squad, what the heck are you doing in here? Get out while you still can, okay? Next thing you know, you're going to be like the rest of us freaks and you're going to be taking pictures of freezers at your local grocery store and stalking people to see if they buy the items or not, okay? So get out while you can because you don't belong here, all right? For everybody that's already in the rabbit hole, let's talk about TTCF, okay? So I just did some channel checks because that's what us freaks that are in TTCF, that's what we do, okay? Uh, make sure you're subscribed if, if you're not already subscribed to the channel. But uh, yeah, that's what we like to do. So uh, I went to Fry's tonight. Fry's is owned by Kroger, if you didn't know. And it's nice to finally see the items getting in the Kroger stores. I mean, Kroger, the rollout was a little slow. Let's just call it that. It seems like Target moves a million miles per hour. Like, it's amazing. Like, like Target moves so fast. And yet Kroger, who you think would be like, they're the king of groceries, right? Like, there's nobody bigger than Kroger. You know, Walmart's obviously a massive player, but like Walmart, Kroger, those are the big players in terms of grocery game, right? And specifically in terms of a direct grocery play, there's no one bigger than Kroger. So you would think they would move fast, but actually they move super slow compared to Target. So the rollout's been slow, but it's nice to see the items finally getting in these stores, okay? Now, what I want to start out looking at here is um, basically the, the pizza area. And what I'm finding is several different pizza items now, four different SKUs, which is awesome, okay? Very, very awesome. Um, and they're in the natural section as we kind of expect, okay? They're all cauliflower crust pizzas, essentially. They got a cheese one. They have the uh, plant-based pepperoni one. They have a, a two cheese one, which that one's actually vegan as well, which is cool. And then they have their, their vegetable pizza. Um, so this is a very, very exciting opportunity, the pizza game for us. Cause I mean, look at Amy's. I mean, you don't even think about Amy's as like a player in the pizza market, but I mean, look at how many different SKUs just somebody like Amy's has. This is the biggest player kind of in this natural, uh, segment. Let's call it that when it comes to pizzas is Coley, uh, power, uh, brand essentially. And so with Tattoo Chef, it's great to see them get in with four SKUs right from the jump. And um, what I'm hoping it for is that they get nice sell-through over time. We've seen Tattoo Chef. We, we know sell-through is very strong. Um, what I'm hoping is, is eventually they get six, six items and eight items. Uh, they could definitely have a plant-based sausage pizza. They could probably have some sort of plant-based like three meat, like something that's like a, you know, imitates bacon. And then their plant-based pepperoni and their plant-based sausage. That's definitely a potential for them. So it's great to see this. This is a huge opportunity for the company over time. And um there aren't, a, there aren't a ton of big players really in this market yet of the natural pizzas. Obviously, if you go just the traditional route, you've got the Tontinos, you got Tony's, you got DiGiorno, you got all those, you know, million pizza brands. But this sector is growing pretty rapidly. And it's nice to see the chef have multiple SKUs already in this. And I can only imagine what they're going to have three years from now, five years from now, seven years from now, versus what they have today with kind of these introductory, um, you know, products there essentially. Okay. Now, this is huge. So what we're looking at here, this is like the, what's considered the natural burrito area, okay? And the reason this is so big is uh, we've already seen a leak on Kroger's website on several different um, like Smith's fries, some of, the, some of those have already leaked, where essentially you can already see the product on the website. Now they might have taken it down, but um, I can tell you that packaging looks freaking amazing. And I would assume this, these products will be announced very shortly and be in the stores very shortly, essentially. But I mean, you look at how big this opportunity already is. I mean, imagine where these, these things are going to be in three years from now, five years from now, seven years from now. But I mean, look at the, you know, already two very nice doors for kind of what is considered like natural burritos. And so Tattoo Chef's going to likely have multiple SKUs here right from the jump. I'm going to say somewhere between three and five SKUs. And this is just another huge opportunity. And when, when you think about this for a moment, okay, it's not just about, oh, Tattoo Chef's launching burrito products so they can make, you know, $10 million extra a year or $50 million extra a year, whatever they can sell through, right? That's actually not the biggest factor. The biggest factor for Tattoo Chef is just having more places, especially as Tattoo Chef being a new brand, relatively new, like no one ever heard of Tattoo Chef two years ago, right? Like literally nobody heard of it. And they've come out of nowhere and they've taken the world by storm and they're putting up crazy numbers, right? But the biggest thing for a new brand is having several different touch points in a store so people can try one of your products and associate your brand with something, right? And so if somebody buys a Tattoo Chef uh, you know, burrito and they like that experience, they think it's pretty good, then they're more likely to, when they see a pizza, 
right, to pick up a pizza when they like to see a, a frozen entree of some kind. Hey, I, that's that brand that made that, that burrito I had that time, right? And so this is where it gets, it's very, very important. And if you see somebody like Amy's, right, which Amy's would definitely be considered a, a competitor of Tattoo Chef, definitely a competitor, right? I think they're just a much slower uh, moving competitor and, and they're not as good as Tattoo Chef, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, but Amy's no doubt is a serious competitor. And you can see Amy's has products all over the place. They got burrito products here. They got the pizzas. They got frozen entrees. They have a lot of different products at a lot of different touch points in a store. And so Tattoo Chef, they're going this route, but Tattoo Chef, I think, is going to get even smarter as they, they introduce snack products and things like that that have crazy margins. So this is what this is an exciting opportunity. I took a picture of this, too, just so you can see like how big the, the burrito section is. And I understand, you know, this is in Arizona. I'm taking these pictures. So the burrito section is usually bigger in Arizona than it would be most other places. But nonetheless, this is a huge opportunity for Tattoo Chef. And I can't wait to see, do, 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 you know, a bunch of Tattoo Chef items here. And, um, you know, it's just a very, very exciting opportunity for the company over time. Okay. Now, what we're looking at here, essentially, is um, some of their, uh, let's call it like side dishes and things like that. They got chow mein there. They got their uh, Mexican style street corn there and, and a couple other products. And, um, you know, this is another one of those very, very big opportunities for the company. You know, they only got a few SKUs in most of these stores. Target seems to be the one that had the most SKUs in. But I mean, you, when you think about this opportunity, right? Talk about a crazy big opportunity. If you just look at, you know, how many different SKUs are in this section, I mean, it is absolutely enormous. And the thing I think is most powerful when it comes to food game, because I, I, you know, not everybody eats everything, right? Not everybody would even be into products like this or, or frozen vegetables and things like that. But I think it's very important to understand just because you might personally not eat it, you got to understand how big um, these things really are. By the way, crispy uh, cauliflower wings, man, could that be a, a, something that Tattoo Chef gets in over time? They're the cauliflower uh, kings, let's call it that, okay? So... You got to understand like how big these opportunities are and how many SKUs you can get into a store and what that means for your sell through and your touch points and how big these segments are. Even if you don't like I'm not one that I don't buy frozen vegetables, uh, you know, or, or even frozen entrees for the most part. But I can tell you a whole bunch of people do buy those. And so it's very important that you're in these segments and you're, you're doing sell through and you're getting those touch points there as well, which, by the way, that product is really, really good. That Mexican style street corn. Definitely try that one. Make that with a burrito or something. Oh my gosh, man! Flipping flapjack and amazing. Um, now these are the these are the main items that really drive Tattoo Chef's business: the burritos, frozen pizzas, um, you know, all those sorts of opportunities, side dishes, stuff like that. Even family uh, dinners, which they don't have that at, at this fries yet, from what I see, but they do have them in a lot of Target stores. You know, those are all awesome opportunities for the company, right? But this this right here. That's our bread and butter, okay? The the plant-based pepper, or excuse me, the plant-based uh, burrito bowl. Obviously, they plant-based uh, pepperoni bowl. Their uh, cauliflower mac and cheese. Their enchilada bowl. You know, the Buddha bowl. These are these. There. These are all their core products that are really putting up the crazy numbers. And so, you know, look at this. I mean, the six items. Now, first off, that's a huge win. Like, you know, they were non-existent in fries a year ago, two years ago. They, like, you know, not even in the store. And so the fact that also now you got all these other SKUs we just looked at, right? But also like six SKUs of frozen entrees, this is great, okay? But keep this in mind. This is very, very important, okay? This is just the start. This is like the second inning for the company. The first inning is you just get in the game, right? Um, but this is the very beginning of this game, essentially. Six SKUs is a joke, is a joke compared to how many SKUs this company is going to have. When I say SKU, that means each individual product item. How many they're going to have in a, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Six is, is literally uh, almost laughable from where this company will be in a few years from now. You know, look at something like Lean Cuisine. I mean, they got basically like three doors dedicated to them. You go to a major fries, right? Kroger, Smith's, whatever you want to call it. And you count up the SKUs. I mean, you can, for these big frozen food brands, you count 40, 50, 60, 70 SKUs for the, you know, when you start counting them, you're like, oh, one, two, three, four, five. So it's, it's ridiculous, right? This, in my opinion, is where Tattooed Chef's going long term. They're not going to get there magically tomorrow and have all these SKUs in the stores, but slowly but surely, they're going to go from six SKUs to 12, to 18, to 24, to 36, and they're just going to keep expanding. And the next thing you know, all of a sudden they got a full door and then two doors and three doors. That's what I'm fully convinced Tattoo Chef's going to over time. So although, yes, this is awesome, right? 
They didn't have these six items in the stores before. Remember, this is just child's play right now. This is literally just to start compared to where things will be in a few years. It was like when you first started seeing your, your first few Teslas around town. It was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, you know, this is awesome, right? That, that was just child's play compared to what Tesla is doing now and compared to what Tesla will do, be doing in five or 10 years from now. And so when you see these, just understand that's child's play right now because this is where they're going to long-term, in my opinion, this sort of skew opportunity. You look at something like Stouffer's, you know, they got two full doors. And I mean, you count up how many SKUs this company has. It's astronomically high, right? And once you get in and you put up the numbers, you keep getting more and more product placement and more and more opportunity because you're moving the volume, you're moving the units essentially, right? And so the whole and the whole market's moving toward these sorts of products. That's the best thing. That's the best thing. And I can tell you, as the the world goes more and more plant based over the next decade, I can tell you these sorts of brands are going to have a hard time changing to compete with something like a tattooed chef because they're not known as that they're known as you know the the one that's selling you know spaghetti with meat sauce and the stall the salisbury steaks and the you know uh these sorts of things right um so the, the creamy chicken parmesan you know that's what they're known for and so when you try to go into like plant-based products and whatnot right like tattoo chef has you know there's going to be a bit of an uphill battle for them to try to change how consumers think about them. Because I, I don't think about Stouffer's as far as like getting a plant-based item of some kind. That's like the last brand I would think about. If I wanted to get a Salisbury steak, that's usually one of the first I would think about, right? Um, but but not to get like some sort of plant-based item. You look at Marie Callender's. I mean, look at this. A door, a full door there, a full door there. It looks like kind of like a half a door here, right? And then like another full door over here. I mean, it's, it's insane. You count up how many SKUs Marie Callender's has. That's ridiculous, okay? And so that's where that's where the chef is going over the coming years. And um, you're going to walk in your, your grocery store, I believe, in, in a matter of the next couple of years, and you're going to see a full door there. No different than we see at Target now. You already see, you go into Target stores, and now Tattoo Chef, at, at almost all these Target stores now has a full door dedicated to them. And I'm seeing some of these super Target stores and whatnot having not only a full door dedicated to them, but actually two full doors. It'll be a, like another section. And then like several other products just randomly placed, you know, like the Aussie bowls, uh, the cold brew bowls and those sorts of things, right? And so, I mean, it's just, it's just insane that this long-term opportunity here, okay? Now, I, I know in this sort of market right now, you can't even think about anything positive because you're just being flooded with negative stuff constantly and um, all that. And I think in these sorts of time periods, it's very important to understand what's going on with the underlying fundamentals of a business model and um, you know, disconnecting that from stock prices and from what the market's doing right now and what's going on in Russia and oh my gosh, you know, dot, dot, dot. And it's very important to keep your eye on the prize and what's going on with these companies. And, you know, you got to understand, a lot of folks like to talk about inflation. And Kathy Wood brought up a very good point recently. She said, you know, the, in, a, in a high inflation environment, the ones that are best served in, in that sort of environment are, are high growth companies, right? High growth companies usually have pricing leverage, and they're not known um, for a specific margin, right? Like, it's not like Tattoo Chef's been established for 20 years now, and they got a specific margin they need to hit. However, you know, other brands have specific margins they have to hit, and so they have to make sure their pricing's constantly in line, right? Growth stocks, it's not really like that. Margins can move around a lot. But in this sort of market, it's just very easy to get, um, you know, kind of like, uh, let's call it like, like, focus over here. Focus on what Russia is doing. Don't focus on what's going on in the, you know, in the freezer aisle right now. Focus on Russia. And that's just always, that's just always a mistake. Like, 100% a mistake every single time ever. You know, I was looking at the market right now. I went on the Hungry Bull app, and Ethereum's down big. Bitcoin's down big. Uh, ADA's down 14%, just some massive downward moves. And then with the massive downward moves in, in futures, you know, it looks like it'll be a rough day tomorrow. We'll see kind of what happens there. As far as Tattooed Chef and the way this one's setting up, um, I love the way this one's kind of setting up recently, right? I mean, if you look it, throughout all this drama we've had, which is, I call it the wall of worry. That's a new term for it. This massive wall of worry we have right in front of our eyes, which is inflation, the Fed, uh, Russia's at the forefront right now with this Ukraine situation. You think about all this drama that's going on in the market, right? And yet Tattoo Chef's been holding up pretty decent the past month. And, um, I like the setup there, and I think I think what it comes down to with a stock like the Chef, right, is I think there's just a lot of folks um, that 
just got out of the stock and, and just have, have left it. And now it's just hard to find sellers there. And it's clear, it's clear as day, it's hard to find sellers for the chef anymore now at this point in time, because you have all this going on and look what has happened to other stocks over the past month or so, right? I mean, you don't talk even mega caps. Look what's happened to a ton of these mega caps. Look what's happened to so many stocks in general. I mean, so many stocks in general have gone like this. And in the meanwhile, the chef for the past month is actually, and, and believe it or not, an uptrend for the past month, which is just crazy to think about, right? From the bottoms that reached kind of in uh, mid, to, mid to late January. And so what I see in this situation is Tattoo Chef has this, and you can see it in the volume as well, Tattoo Chef has this long-term shareholder base um, of folks like myself, right, that are really holding the stock and are also buyers of this stock. And on any major dips, we buy and we add more shares. And we're plugging those shares for the long term. We're like, more Tattoo Chef at 10, more Tattoo Chef at 12, more Tattoo Chef at you know, 14, whatever, we'll take it. And we keep just adding shares and increasing our ownership in the end. And um, as long as this company executes the way we believe it's going to execute over the next five, 10 years, you know, the, the Tattoo Chef shareholder, shareholders will be very, very thrilled, um, regardless of whatever happens with the Russia situation and whatever happens with inflation in the short term and the Fed and all this stuff. And I, you know, I, I've been on this earth for 32 years. And um, guess what? Every single time you get drama is a huge buying opportunity. Every single time, there's never been one time that it hasn't been a big buying opportunity. That's what it consistently is. And so I think a lot of us uh, that uh, are invested in the stock, we just understand this 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 game and how it's played. And if we get any significant dips, we just buy more shares. Um, we had the, the massive kind of exodus out of the stock and the, the sellout from the folks that weren't as convinced, but maybe, maybe were invested um, kind of in the back half of last year. And now it just feels, and based upon the pricing action, based upon the volume that's going through, it just seems like, you know, it's just us, the, the longs, that are really in this for the long term. And uh, we're ready to pick up shares. You want to give us any more discounts? We'll take the discounts and we'll add more shares and we'll continue to increase our ownership because we, we know where this company's going over the long term and we study it enough. So um, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as always. Everybody in the TTCF squad, much love. And um, I'll do a dedicated TTCF video every once in a while and kind of update on, on what's going on because there's a lot that's going on fundamentally, fundamentally with the company and new products coming out, uh, new SKUs getting in stores, uh, expansion into stores. And it's a, it's a pretty darn exciting opportunity. And I know in this sort of market, no one wants to talk about anything exciting unless it's on a negative uh, light. But, um, you know, we, we got to we gotta, uh, cover, cover the positive stuff as well. So anyways, guys, much love as always. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to be subscribed to the channel and have a great day.